everybody bashing him about fucking with Aaliyah when she was young. But then you gotta think about Jay Z was fucking with Foxy Brown when she was the exact same age. So. That's that's the great thing about you know having ultimate confidence in yourself is it doesn't matter what's happening. I don't care what's happening. I don't care what you on or this person's on. So I like to uncover things, the good, the bad, the ugly in in America. And mm -hmm. this story was mm -hmm. some innocent people and some people are guilty. <laughs> It seems R. Kelly isn't the only shocking figure in the entertainment industry because yet another huge name has been accused of something truly heinous. The reports that are surfacing about this notorious individual made me sick to the stomach when I read them for the first time. Who is it, you ask? Well, it's none other than Jay-Z. But how did this all come to light? The answer, Jay-Z's longstanding rival, Nas. Yeah, and it mostly involves other people because when other people are involved, you have to also, you may be ready to expose these things and there's certain parts of. In an explosive interview from 2002, hip-hop legend Nas sat down with none other than the fierce and fearless Wendy Williams to discuss the scandalous R. Kelly sex tape. Fast forward to today, and this interview has resurfaced, shedding new light on the dark secrets lurking within the industry. Have mm -hmm. you maintained any type of contact with R. Kelly since? It, it, I, we spoke, like, you know what I'm saying? We spoke a couple of times, but I don't really want to be, like, um, I know he's getting calls from me. Nas, who had just released his scorching diss track, Ether, aimed at Jay-Z, opened up about his suspicions regarding Jay's knowledge of Kelly's despicable actions. He boldly exclaimed, you can't tell me Jay didn't see a 14-year-old girl come into the studio and sit on R. Kelly's lap. You gonna tell me he didn't see no 14-year-old girl in his vicinity? As someone who had crossed paths with R. Kelly during tours, Nas claimed to have had conversations with the man himself and sensed that something was amiss. When you consider Jay-Z's close connection to R. Kelly and Jay-Z's own history, the situation becomes even more chilling. Don't what I'm talking about? Allow me to explain. According to the grapevine, Foxy Brown herself spilled the tea on her rise to rap stardom to media takeout, and let's just say it involved a heavy price tag and some seriously questionable actions. Can you believe it? Foxy alleges that Jay-Z, the man who introduced her to the rap game when he was 27, took her virginity when she was a tender 15-year-old. But wait, it doesn't end there. Hova apparently splurged on Foxy's shopping sprees and pampering at hair and nail salons while she was still in high school. This person highlighted how everyone is so upset about R. Kelly. One day we're all going to have an honest conversation about Jay-Z. His got a whole album with R. Kelly, but no one mentions this. They used to be tight, tight. This person pointed out something startling. Jay-Z is a pedophile, too. He was accused, along with Jeffrey Epstein and Harvey Weinstein, of buying a five- or six-year-old, another added. Like Jay-Z pedophile adjacent, at the very least, he was messing with Foxy Brown before she was of age. And everything in my spirit says the same thing for Bay. This person had an interesting take on things. Jay-Z took Foxy Brown's virginity at 15, and the world knows about it because she told us he's a pedophile and we all know it. So why isn't he charged with anything? Not his time, I guess. Hash for your Kelly hash. Justice for Kelly hash surviving lies. And that's not even the worst part. Foxy claims that one of her steamy encounters with Jay-Z was caught on tape. But here's the shocker. She wasn't alone. Joining the entangled duo was none other than the real Wanda from In Living Color, the one and only Mr. Jamie Foxx. According to Foxy, Jay-Z had her sign multiple gag orders to keep their tryst, which involved all three of them under wraps. To add to the drama, Foxy insists that the infamous tape was conveniently stolen from her home, and she firmly believes Jay-Z had a hand in that scandalous heist. In this tell-all account, Foxy doesn't hold back her disdain for Jay's better half, Beyonce. Seems like there's no love lost between these two fierce women, but the saga doesn't end there. Rumors have been swirling for ages that Jay-Z, in his 30s at the time, engaged in sexual encounters with a young Rihanna whom he signed when she was just 16. And let's not forget about Terry Mari, the singer-turned-reality star who was also allegedly tangled up in Jay-Z's web when she was just a teenager. It's a tangled mess of power dynamics, age discrepancies, and industry secrets. The whispers in the industry go even further claiming that Jay-Z had sexual relations with the late singer Aaliyah when she was underage. 
And buckle up because it gets even wilder. Jay-Z teamed up with the infamous music industry pedophile R. Kelly for a joint album and tour. Yes, the very same R. Kelly who illegally married Aaliyah when she was only 15, using a fake ID. The marriage was eventually annulled by Aaliyah's rightfully outraged parents. Maybe it's true what they say, birds of a feather might just have flocked together in this case. According to Corey Holcomb, the notorious Epstein's Islands played host to an astonishing array of A-listers, including none other than power couple Beyonce and Jay-Z. These private getaways became playgrounds for scientists, royalty, and other prominent celebrities, where unimaginable events unfolded behind closed doors. Y'all talk all that shit about R. Kelly. Beyonce was on that island where they was killing kids. For those that don't know, Little St. James is a secluded island owned by the late billionaire Jeffrey Epstein. This seemingly picturesque paradise became a breeding ground for his heinous acts of sex trafficking and abuse. Dubbed a perfect hideaway, it allowed Epstein and his associates to evade law enforcement and trap their victims in a sickening cycle of torment. The Attorney General of the U.S. Virgin Islands took a bold step by filing a criminal complaint to reclaim the island as government property, exposing the insidious activities that occurred there. Ghislaine Maxwell, Epstein's former associate, faced justice as well, receiving convictions on multiple counts of sex trafficking, with the island's role featuring prominently in her trial. The outcome? Maxwell now faces a daunting 20-year prison sentence and a staggering $750,000 fine. Little St. James stands as a haunting symbol of the dark underbelly of sex trafficking and the unrelenting fight for justice. Picture the crystal clear waters and idyllic landscapes of the U.S. Virgin Islands where Little St. James sits as a deceptive jewel. This serene haven, surrounded by coral reefs and serene inlets, seems like a paradise, but beneath its picturesque exterior lies a sinister truth. Back in 2010, Epstein, a registered sex offender following a conviction for child prostitution settled in the Virgin Islands, with his shell corporations operating out of an unassuming office nestled in a strip mall, he established a disconcerting presence. Little St. James became his kingdom after he shelled out nearly $8 million to acquire it from venture financier Arch Cummin in 1998, all while hiding behind a shell company. Epstein wasted no time transforming the island, obliterating its natural flora and replacing it with towering 40-foot palm trees. His audacious building spree raised eyebrows in 2007 as he expanded his primary estate into a sprawling mansion boasting a swimming pool, a desalinization system, and even a terrace off the master bedroom. Among the alleged guests who frequented Epstein's twisted realm were Nobel laureate Lawrence Krauss, actor Kevin Spacey, supermodel Naomi Campbell, and even former Tony Blair advisor Lord Peter Mandelson. In the midst of it all, rumors swirled, fueled by social media posts, claiming that high-profile celebrities, including Jay-Z, Beyonce, Kanye West, Disney, and Universal Music Group were entangled in Ghislaine Maxwell's trial for sex crimes. While these claims have been cited in a civil action, the full extent of their involvement remains to be seen. It's not surprising that the allegations surrounding Jay-Z seem to be coming from Nas, considering the two haven't exactly been on good terms. Nas recently made an appearance on The Daily Show to promote his highly anticipated album King's Disease 3, the third installment in his successful series with Hit Boy. Host Trevor Noah couldn't resist diving into the infamous beef between Nas and Jay-Z, referencing a track from the album titled Thun, where Nas spits fire with lines like, no beef or rivals, they playing either on title, brothers can do anything when they decide to, in a Range Rover, dissecting bars from TakeOver. Sometimes I text Hova like, NGGA, this ain't over. Noah pressed Nas, asking about the beef, how it faded away, but also mentioning how Nas still texts Jay-Z with a cheeky reminder that it's far from finished. Nas couldn't help but acknowledge the cunning move Jay-Z pulled on the day he unveiled the track list for King's Disease 3. Just like a master chess player, Jay-Z released a photo flaunting his impressive collection of Grammys, leaving Nas in awe. Perhaps Nas should have responded with a power move of his own, brandishing his well-deserved Grammy in a stunning photo. In 2020, when asked about Jay-Z consistently dropping his projects around the same time as Nas, the rap legend brushed it off, hinting at a shared energy that synchronizes their work. Was he trying to avoid the drama? It's definitely possible. Or maybe he thinks he's done enough damage with the revelations he's made about Jay-Z. That's all for the video, folks. Thanks for watching and goodbye.